Howdy everybody, this is Bake with IronThroneCraft.com and today we're going to be talking about the Blood Moon again and I will show what I did this last weekend for the Blood Moon in order to uh, try to score some points and win. We didn't win as a kingdom, uh, we lost to Kingdom 11 again, they took us down and so getting right into it, I'm showing what I spent a lot of the time this Blood Moon doing which is sitting far off screen and watching people try to tile trade. Now, tile trading is when people are sending their troops out to a tile and hitting it for each other, so they're trading points, basically, during these PvP events. So you see there's somebody from Kingdom 29 right there, and then there's a couple guys from Kingdom 11. And they're just going to hit these tiles over and over again and kind of rig the PvP events in order to try to get the Dark Lord chests or just to try to get the Tier 3. I understand it if you're getting the Tier 3. I'm not a big fan of it if you're using it to get the Dark Lord chests. So what I spent a lot of the events doing was sitting off screen and screwing up their tile trades. But while this is happening, Dizzle got a pretty good hit on Nap. And so you might remember Nap Police is somebody that I rallied last time. This is Dizzle solo. He's big. He hits hard. You saw that he hit him for 111 million power, but let's look at what Nap Police was wearing, see if it's the same thing as last time. And so scrolling through his stats, you see right there, 1,500% additional damage to Tier 1 troops. That means he's wearing Dark Lord gear, at least one accessory, probably two or one that's really upgraded. But you see Dizzle sent archers, and because of that, he crushed his infantry. And that police still has a split of Tier 2 troops on the bottom. While this is happening, I'm watching these guys sit their tiles out, but then, oh, surprise, surprise, this 800 mil just uh, came in and is sitting there unshielded. So I'm obviously going to take that, especially during a PvP event. You see me get the hits, or get the uh, rewards, and let's see how it went. Softer than Dizzle's. And I only hit him for 44 million power, about 6 million troops. You see, he shields immediately. They've still got some tiles out there. I'm watching him, and you might have seen me a second ago. What I did is I went through Kitty Puppy, and I looked at all of the heroes that he had. The reason for that is because I'm, I'm trying to counter Kitty Puppy's high-tier troops. So let's look at this report on the guy that I just soloed there, 900 million. You see that he's got 1530 infantry attack. And we're going to see that a lot this Blood Moon, because a lot of people have gone to single-type traps. So you see, I only killed 1.6 million of his infantry. These are all Tier 3 troops, though, so I did a little bit better on points than I thought I did. I, call, I killed all the archers and I killed all the cav, but his infantry had a couple survive. And because I lost 500,000 tier, tier 5, and I killed a little bit over 6 million Tier 3, that means we broke about even on points. So should have been a lot better, would have been a lot better had I sent uh, you know something other than infantry at the, when he's wearing infantry gear. But now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go wreck their tile trades. So go ahead and uh, just steal the points out from underneath them, basically. And I spent a lot of Blood Moon doing this, like I said, because if these people want to try to game the events, I don't feel bad about stealing the points from them. But back to what I was saying about Kitty Puppy earlier. I looked at Kitty Puppy, and I looked at his heroes, and I looked at the traits of each hero. And that way, whenever Kitty Puppy hit one of those tiles, if he did, he never did, and I'm... I'm not sure if that's because he saw my solo come flying in off screen, so he knew what I was about to do or what. But I capped this guy's off a tile, and I'm going to go ahead and execute it uh, because he's trying to cheat at a PvP event. So, going to do that, get myself another uh, day or so of execution buff. But while I'm looking at Kitty Puppy's heroes, I'm noting the traits. And so in my head, I'm saying, you know, Valencia, the, the blonde girl, she is his infantry hero. And I know that. So whenever he sends to a tile, what I'm going to do is when he sends that uh, march to a tile, I look at it and I look which hero is leading the march. And then I'm going to counter based upon that. Because Watchtower won't show you what's coming at uh, the capital. So you're going to do this a lot at the capital as well. And then this is a dude that I soloed. His name's Peace Shield. He's 1.4 billion. That's him right there, 1.441. I lit those, fo lit those flames on him. But if you look at the report, it's horrendous. It's one of the ugliest hits you've ever seen in your entire life. So you see, I sent... A whole lot. 1.3 million troops at him. I killed 3.5 million. And if you look at the power there, I killed 3.5 million tier 1. So let's scroll down and look at his uh, stats and see how he ran it like that in order to nearly cap me. And we keep on going down, and then we see right there, boom, 1,800% infantry attack, 600% infantry defense. That means he's wearing a full set of Conqueror gear on his guard captain. And he's probably going to be stacked only infantry. There it is. And that's tier 1 infantry that I only killed 3.5 million of, injured 1.1 million of. That's terrible. That is a terrible hit. He won massively on points. Not only that, he had 1,800% infantry attack, which tells me that his Conqueror gear is... <laughs> there's, 
there's my analysis for the alliance. Uh, so you can see that I'm not very happy about that. But his conqueror here is 89%, which means it was like all over level 10, and he's 1.4 billion. So that shows you that these single type traps in Blood Moon can do really, 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 really well. Even if I had sent archers at him, even if I leveraged into the only troops that he had, he still would have done really well. I would have hit him a lot harder than I did, obviously, but he still would have won pretty big because all of that infantry has so much defense and so much HP. And that's what we talk about in that article on the site about protecting your castle. If you can't get to Dark Lord gear, stack up one set of gear really high. Get it up really high and then stack that. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit and we're going to show me kind of messing around at the capital a little bit. And you see right there, I just lost the capital, but you notice the boat boosts. He had all those boosts. He sent tier four infantry, or I'm sorry, ca uh, cavalry at me. So I'm going to counter with infantry, and I'm going to try to take those troops out of the uh, capital if he doesn't get them pulled out in time. As soon as I land on the capital, though, look what I do. Pull out immediately. And that is what happened in the Blood Moon, because you might have seen at the bottom of the screen there that he immediately sent another counter back at me. He didn't get his troops out, though. So I got a bunch of free points off of that hit right there. And I thought I capped his hero, so I immediately went to the prison to try to chop it. But as we'll see in a second, I didn't actually cap his hero for some reason that I'm not really sure of, honestly. You see that I uh, killed 80% of the march. He had his hero in there. I sent the counter type, and I just didn't get the hero capped. So he got his hero back on that one. Uh, otherwise... I would have had another one for my graveyard. But this is what a lot of the capital fight in Blood Moon actually is, is just uh, two people using a whole lot of march speeds back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and trying to catch the other one slipping. Uh, usually what I'm doing at, at, uh, during Blood Moon at the capital is I'm just sending 500 troops, 1,000 troops, something like that. So that's the hit again. You see I, got, I killed 528,000. That's just me scratching my head at it, trying to figure out why I didn't cap his damn hero. But... My hero is now coming back. He's sending more troops in, and I see that he's sending 975k in. But I also see that the capital is held by Blue Earth, and that is an alt. And one thing that people need to realize, if you have an alt holding R5 of the capital, R5 while you hold the capital, you're not getting all your research boosts. You're not getting all your building boosts. The only boosts you get are from your hero gear. So because of that, because I see him filling the capital with an alt holding it, I'm going to kill all those troops, and I should have let that last march land right there. I should have waited a second on my speeds. But see how this hit went, because I have all my research, and he doesn't. You see there, I lost 270k. There is the difference in boosts. You see how his bar is empty and mine is all the way full? I lost 270k T4, and I killed all those tier 6 troops. And that is a lot of tier 6 to lose, number one. And it's also a lot of tier 6 to lose if it's during Blood Moon. So... You need to be very careful if you're playing around at the capital. If, you don't, if you're not really positive about what you're doing, if you're not holding R5, you need to get your troops the hell out of there. Otherwise, somebody might come along and run like you saw that I just did right there. And I immediately go to uh, Alliance Chat, share that, show that I just got uh, about 400 million points off of one hit. And so my point on this is if you are hitting the capital during Blood Moon, you need to get your troops the hell out of there or you need to have R5, and you need to know what you're doing. It's really hard in the capital because you cannot see what's coming. It's hard to leverage. So now, skipping ahead a little bit more, I see this guy right here, Viper. I know he watches the videos because he says it in Kingdom Chat here in a little bit. But you see here, I see all these marches that are his troops that are marching all over the place. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate something called a tracker rally. A lot of people don't know that you can do this in the forest, but there are several rules that apply to combat in the forest. One of which is that if you get burned while you're in the forest, all of your marches return to you, even if they're in a rally, if they're in the capital, no matter where they are. They all come back to you, and you get random ported out. So, as the attacker, if you're burning someone in the forest, what you do is you set a rally on them, and then that will update their cords after they get ported. So this guy has all these troops out all over the place. So I know he has troops for his base, but they're not there right now. So you see what I'm typing out in Alliance chat is I want them to update the cords for me after I hit them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teleport next to him. I'm going to set a rally on him. Then I'm going to burn him. That's going to port him out. going to return all of his troops to him. And then I'm going to port over to him and hit all the troops. That's the plan. So I set the rally, send the solo, 
don't really need to speed it because he doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, or he doesn't have the ability to shield because he all these all these marches out. So I burn him, and then I immediately speed back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, number one, I'm going to check the battle report and make sure there's not something funky there, like he has a really stacked hero or something along the lines. So you see enemies killed zero. Check the report. Go get the new cords on him. There he is right there. He's on fire. Accidentally press X, so I have to do it again. Teleport to him, and he's shielded. So well played by him. He saw what was coming. Uh, I think it probably surprised him whenever he got bounced out of the forest there. But had that worked, I would have been able to then kill all of his troops there. So if you guys ever see somebody that's just hanging out in the forest, you can do that. You can burn them out, set a tracker rally on them. If you're ever trying to zero somebody that's in the forest, you need to set a tracker rally on them first. If they're holding the capital or something like that and you want to zero them, well, you don't need to uh, set a tracker on them if they're holding the capital. But if they're filling the capital, you think they've gone to sleep, you need to set a tracker rally before you burn them. That way you get their new cords, you can teleport to them, you can finish the zero off. Uh, and a lot of people think that they're somewhat safe in the forest, but uh, they're not, as long as you set that tracker rally first. So now this is just me dicking around at the capital some more, uh, trying to catch just for relax off guard. You see that they transferred R5 this time, because uh, I guess Sancho caught on a little bit to what I was doing. He kind of cooled it at the capital after that, and not many people sent more than 500 troops after that. That was pretty much my only big hit in the capital. The rest of the Blood Moon was just uh, 500 troops, 1,000 troops, something like that, holding them. So, <clears throat> one way that you can try to game the capital a little bit, if you're doing the capital or tiles, is like I mentioned earlier in the video with Kitty Puppy, is that you look at their heroes, you look at their traits, and then that will kind of tell you what they're sending. If you are not R5 and you're holding the capital, whenever somebody hits you, you have to have a troop in there to see what they sent. So, what I'll do is I'll sit at the capital... I'll pass R5 to myself for my alt. You see my alt's holding it right now, so I don't have any research boost, so I'm not going to be doing big fights there. But I'll pass R5 to myself, hit the capital, pull out, see what they sent, and then I see if they speed it back. Because if they sent a big infantry march at me, I know now infantry's out of the equation. So I've got kind of a bit of an edge at the Paper, Rock, Scissors game. It's dangerous, though. If you hit with the wrong thing, it's going to hurt. So good job to Kingdom 11 in this Blood Moon in ours. Uh, Kingdom 5 won the other one. These are the scores from our uh, Blood Moon, which was 11 versus 13 versus 29. And you see that PSY1 Therapy took number 1, we took number 2, and the Berserkers from Kingdom 29 took number 3. There are the skills. I'm sorry, the uh, points. <laughs> Somewhat the skills, too. But uh, you, see the, you see the points there for Kingdom 13. Pretty top-end heavy. And this is what we got for being defeated. So we got some... Uh, Dark Lord chests, you see that I was fourth, so I got a big old 10 Dark Lord chests out of that one. But what I want to show is why it's a big deal to win the Blood Moon, and why you should try it. Blood Moon's closed now, but you can still go there for another couple days. And as a lot of people know, as a lot of people have been saying, and a lot of people have been doing, save up AP for these Blood Moon places. Because if you don't win, as you see, I just tried to shield in Blood Moon, can't do it. And that's because we lost. I'm pretty confident that nobody's going to hit me because nobody hit me for the duration of Blood Moon because I guess they know that I've got a couple siege behind my walls. But what I'm going to show now is Chaotic Stronghold. You look at this, a level 30 Chaotic Stronghold, 200k silver, gives 12 of those. So you get a decent amount of silver off of a level 30 Chaotic Stronghold. If you want stone, you go for 28. If you want wood, you go for 27. If you want food and you're a crazy person, you go for 29. I don't know why you would. So, But look at Bloodies. You see, Bloodies give 900k bonus just for damage you get of each type resource and then less silver than that but they give the same amount of silver the thing about bloodies is number one they're harder to kill and number two they take 30 ap chaotics only take 20 so what i do after blood moon closes and after i'm not trying to kill everybody anymore i go in and i use all of my ap killing level 30 chaotic strongholds and it allows me to do a ton of research so if you're safe not shielded or if you're nearly zeroed or something like that Go to your Blood Moon and kill some Chaotix. If you were lucky enough to be in a kingdom that won the Blood Moon, good job. Go over there, kill some Chaotix. Monsters also give double rewards. So, but if you're going to go for Bloodies, this is what you have to do. You scout them first, because each type of Bloody Stronghold has all one type of Tier 6 troop, and quite a few of them. So you scroll down, look what it is. This one has Infantry. So I'm about to hit it with Archers, and it's going to take 30 AP to do so. Switch to my Archer Hero, send it. 
And you see, I'm just going to get a little bit extra resources, and I'm also going to get the uh, chest that gives you the item for stronghold march speed and hunting march speed for the accessory like that. So you see, I got 900k of each resource there, and then I also got all the silver and the chest for killing the bloody. As I said, bloodies take a little bit longer, but if you want to do that, well worth the reward. If you are after Dark Lord gear, you can go to Blood Moon. You can kill 30s, 31s, 30 through 35, all drop. I'll have the ability to spawn a Cerberus, which will give you Dark Lord loot. And that gives you two chests per Cerb in the Blood Moon. So that's a big deal. Also, these level 35s drop two chests that give a level 3 to 6 piece of uh, these higher end gear. So it's pretty good. Try to win your Blood Moon so you can go over there and shield. If you are able to unshield, go over there anyways. Use all your AP. It's well worth it. So stay tuned for our video on the Kingdom 37 invasion. Welcome to Invasion for those guys. And maybe we'll be invading your kingdom this weekend. Give me a like. Give me a follow. Thanks for watching.